And today is Mother's Day, so happy Mother's Day. In fact, I've got a picture here, hopefully. This is a picture of uh, my mother and me. For those of you who don't know my mother, she's on the left. Yeah. And I can honestly say, without a shadow of a doubt, if it wasn't for my mother, I wouldn't be here today. Now then. Um, but yeah, she's no longer with us, uh, but I still really miss her. And I just wished I could hear her voice. But there we go. We're probably all in the same boat, most of us. Turn then to the scriptures. Um, I picked the election re reading today from the psalm, Psalm 32, where the psalmist says, Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them, and in whose spirit is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy on me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let all the faithful pray to you while you may be found. Surely the rising of the mighty waters will not reach them. You are my hiding place. You'll protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. Do not be like the horse or the mule, which have no understanding, but must be controlled by bit and bridle, or they will not come to you. Many are the woes of the wicked, but the Lord's unfailing love surrounds the one who trusts in him. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad. You righteous sing, all you who are upright in heart. Amen, and thanks be to God for his word for us this day. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts and minds be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. A couple of weeks ago, we looked at Psalm 27. That begins with the declaration of faith. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? The psalm then moves into the reason for the psalm. Trouble is brewing or has already begun and could get worse. So the psalm is a cry for help to God. And Psalm 32 also begins with a declaration of faith, a thanksgiving declaration of faith in the mercy of God to forgive our sins. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them, and in whose spirit is no deceit. Then the declaration of faith uh, of the psalm, uh, of psalm, like Psalm 27, goes into the reason for that declaration of faith. The psalmist has sinned, kept silent about it, but the silence was having an adverse effect on him. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy on me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Keeping silent has affected him physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. It has affected his whole being. Now, forgiveness is one of the central themes of our faith. Uh, 
we find forgiveness in God and we look for forgiveness with each other. But today I just want to concentrate on this forgiveness from God. We turn to God, we ask for forgiveness, and He forgives. But this can often feel like it sounds a bit too easy. It doesn't always sit well, especially when we see the appalling things that we've seen on the news. Well, not just recently, but throughout time. So many terrible things happen. So we can get an uneasy feeling with this idea of forgiveness. Remember the boy who, he wanted a bicycle. So he asked his parents, but they couldn't afford one. They said, well, you pray to God and ask him for a bicycle. But he thought, no, what I'll do is I'll steal one and ask him to forgive me. And we can get the impression that forgiveness from God is a bit like that. It doesn't really matter what we do as long as we ask for forgiveness. But it doesn't quite work like that. If it was so easy, then why would the psalmist remain silent? Why would we remain silent? And of course, firstly, the things we may do may have consequences here and now. If we commit serious crime, we can expect to go to prison. We may turn to God and ask for forgiveness, but that doesn't mean we can expect to be released from prison or even our sentence be reduced. I know someone who is in touch, well, he visits people on death row uh, in America, and he said that some of those people are the freest people I've ever met in my life because they found this forgiveness in God, but no way do they expect to be released from prison. And some of them wouldn't even want to be released because they feel they should be there for what they've done, but they found this joy in the forgiveness of God. If we took someone's life and nobody knew, we might turn to God for forgiveness but in order to live in the benefit of God's forgiveness, it could mean owning up to what we have done. In which case, we might prefer to remain silent. We may have done something that is not against the law, but in seeking the Lord's forgiveness and living in the benefit of that forgiveness, we might have to face someone or something uh, someone that we've hurt maybe, to say that we're sorry and ask for forgiveness. And that forgiveness may not happen. It may be withheld from us. And that can be a difficult thing to do to face someone. And so we may choose to remain silent. What I'm trying to say here, we can be seen in the, in the boy who stole the bicycle. I'm sure God would forgive him but it would mean the boy taking the bicycle back from whence he stole it. In order to receive God's forgiveness and live in the benefit of that, he would have to take the bicycle back. Otherwise, what would he tell his parents? If he told the truth, his parents would make him take it back. If he lied to his parents, then that would mean he was living in deceit. And the psalm says, Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not account against them, and in whose spirit is no deceit. God can forgive the boy, but he wouldn't be able to keep the bicycle without being deceitful. I believe God's forgiveness is assured, but sometimes that can mean facing up to those things so that we're not living in deceit, and that can be a difficult thing to do. So, we may choose to remain silent. Now, of course, there are times when it's not possible or even appropriate to face up to something or someone. Or our sin may not even involve anyone else. It's just between ourselves and God. But even then, it can be easier to remain silent 
rather than face ourselves in the light of God. But as the psalmist said, his silence had a detrimental effect on him and it became too much to bear. And so he says, I acknowledge my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the guilt of my sin. It would seem the psalmist took a good while to, uh, before he felt ready to confess to God. At first, he may have felt more comfortable keeping silent until his silence became unbearable. Today's gospel reading uh, is the parable of the prodigal son. You know the story well. The son asks for his inheritance and he goes away and he squanders it uh, on what the Bible calls wild living, having a good time, if you like, in another country, away from prying eyes. And then the money runs out and he finds himself working on a pig farm. How low can you get for a Jewish man? And then he realizes actually what I've done is not the right thing I'll go home to my father and tell him that I have sinned against heaven and against him and hope he might take me in as a servant the hard part then for him was admitting that he'd been foolish and then to turn around and go home and face his father and the whole community of course so he went home to his father in complete disgrace and humiliation, but he was received with great joy and compassion. Verse 11 of the psalm says, Many are the woes of the wicked, the prodigal son, but the Lord's unfailing love surrounds the one who trusts in him. The return of the prodigal son. There's a lot more we can say about this, but I think we can see that asking God to forgive our sins is not an easy way out. It's not something we can just keep in our back pockets and pull it out in time of trouble. We're coming soon to Good Friday, where we see Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes upon himself the sins of the world, and that was a costly business. There is nothing flippant about forgiveness. It is a serious thing, and we can only approach it in a serious way. Seeking God's forgiveness is not some easy option. It's not something we can manipulate in a selfish way. No, it's not easy, but I tell you, it's far better than remaining silent because that confession brings with it the most heavenly joy. The psalm ends with, Rejoice in the Lord and be glad, you righteous. Sing, all you who are upright in heart. The righteous and upright in heart here doesn't mean those who've never done anything wrong, but those who have found forgiveness and so can rejoice in the Lord, and be glad. Amen. May the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit fill your hearts with his joy, with his love, and with his peace, this day and forevermore. And all the people said together, Amen. Amen.